A very good evening and welcome. This is yet another edition of Yes 101's Visual Radio. Bringing you the news, I'm Thiruni Karuna Ratna. Let's start off with a look at your headlines. News first headline. Sri Lanka reflects on 15 years since end of civil war. Commemorations held across Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka failed its war veterans, opposition leader claims. Holy water arrives in Nuara Elia for Kumbhabishekam Puja. Advisory for heavy rain issued. In his overseas Slovakia, Prime Minister Robert Fico stable after further surgery. And in sports, young stars shine at 57th Gamatakrida. On to those stories in detail now. On the 27th of July 1975, the assassination of Jaffna Mayor Alfred Dureyappa marked the beginning of a period of escalating racial tensions. This ultimately led to a brutal civil war that claimed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. The senseless war caused immense loss, international scandal, lost investment, economic collapse, hindered development, destruction of resources and a constant sense of uncertainty for the Sri Lankan people. The image of Sri Lanka during this time was undeniably horrific. Checkpoints became a common sight across the country and unnecessary restrictions were imposed on the people. The war finally ended on the 18th of May 2009. The era of terror was finally buried in the Nandikada Lagoon. With the end of the war, normalcy slowly returned. The Yal Devi train recommenced operations to the south. With peace established, the south could now focus on helping the north rebuild and share its freedoms. Laughter and a sense of freedom began to replace the years of fear and hardship. Now is the time to responsibly protect the hard-won peace. By acknowledging the various historical and personal factors that contributed to this conflict, Sri Lanka can rebuild its lagging economy and secure lasting peace. This responsibility lies with a generation of Sri Lankans who are willing to embrace new ideas, broaden their perspectives and live together with a spirit of empathy and understanding. Meanwhile, commemorations were held in the North and East today in remembrance of those who lost their lives in the war. A large number of people participated in this commemoration event held today in Mulivaikal. Wreaths were laid in honour of those who lost their lives in the war. The Secretary-General of Amnesty International also joined the commemoration. Today's anniversary is a grim reminder of the collective failure of the Sri Lankan authorities and the international community to deliver justice to the many victims of Sri Lankan three decade long internal armed conflict. UN investigations have found credible evidence of multiple crimes committed under international law and so has Amnesty International uh, back during the war. It is fundamental, a fundamental right of people that they should be able to access justice for all the crimes that have been committed and yet there has been very little, very little in the way of an independent and impartial national inquiry into such serious crimes. The, uh, there is a report that was published yesterday by the uh, UN um, High Commissioner for Human Rights and it has uh, reiterated the incredible deficit in Sri Lankan's accountability initiative. And we are here to say no and to say stop to the impunity. Meanwhile, another commemoration was held at the University of Jaffna in remembrance of those who lost their lives in the war. Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says that Sri Lanka's war heroes who saved the country from the civil war have been forced to die on the battlefields of Ukraine due to the government's failure to fulfill its duties. 
Premadasa questioned if the country has truly fulfilled its duties towards the war hero community and claimed that many families of war heroes face extreme poverty. He added that some have been forced to leave the country and endure harsh living conditions and others have been sent to fight on the front lines of the Ukraine-Russia war. The opposition leader reiterated that it is our responsibility to protect the war heroes and pledged that he is committed to providing leadership to ensure that starting this year, the war hero community community of Sri Lanka receives the support that they deserve. Today, the procession of offerings for the Kumbhabhishekam Puja, which began its journey from the Mayurapati Kovil in Colombo, reached the Sita Amman Kovil in Nuara Elia. The Kumbhabi Shekam Puja will take place tomorrow. Indian Guru and spiritual leader Gurudev Sri Ravi Shankar arrived in Sri Lanka to attend the Kumbhabi Shekam Puja at the Sita Amman Kovil in Nuara Elia. Sri Lanka is such a beautiful place and this is a historic place and, and a very emotionally connected place for people from uh, Indian subcontinent. And so the moment I announced I'm going to Sri Lanka, lot and lots of people wanted to come with me. There is a lot of interest in for tourism and pilgrimage for Sri Lanka. And this would be one of the first those steps we would like to bring here. Not only that, we are starting several skills uh, development centers here. Sri Lankan youths are very robust, they need skill development. Then, you know, the economy of Sri Lanka can go up. So I have come to explore many other possibilities in the field of education and skill training and employment generation. A delegation of 154 arrived in Sri Lanka at the Bandar Naik International Airport in Katunaika for the Kumbhabhishekam Puja. On to more local news now, the National Hazards Early Warning Centre has issued a weather advisory on heavy rains. Showery and windy conditions are expected to enhance during the next few days from this evening due to pre-monsoonal conditions over the country and surrounding sea areas. According to the Met Department, showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western, Sabaragamua, central, northwestern and southern provinces and in the Manar district. Heavy showers above 100 mm are likely at some places in the western Sabaragamua and northwestern provinces and in the Gaul, Mathara, Kandy and Nuara Elia districts. The National Building Research Organization extended the landslide warning issued to eight districts, namely Badulla, Kalutara, Kandy, Kegol, Kurunagala, Mathale, Nuara Elia and Ratnapura. The general public is requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by temporary localized strong winds and lightning during thunder showers. Let's now take a look at international news. International news. In news overseas, Slovakian Prime Minister Robert Fico is in a serious but stable condition following surgery. 59-year-old Fico was gravely injured in an attack in the small town of Hanlova on Wednesday. Now, officials said it was unlikely that he can be moved back to the city of Bratislava in the next few days. Meanwhile, the man charged with attempting to murder Fico arrived in court today. Up next is Sports News. Sports News. And in sports news, aspiring athletes from Sri Lanka's rural areas got their chance to shine today at the 57th phase of Gamatakrida held at the Pamunugama Mahavidyalaya in Bopitia. Organized by Sports First, this initiative aims to unearth hidden talent and propel them from national to international sporting glory. This year's Gamata Krida received a welcome boost due with sponsorships from SLT Mobitel and Fontera, demonstrating their commitment to nurturing young athletes at the grassroots level. Nearly 300 athletes from the Bopitiya Pamunugama Mahavidyalaya and surrounding schools participated in the Gamata Krida program today. Now, these young hopefuls had the exciting opportunity to be coached by a group of experienced sports personnel who themselves have won national and international titles, making this a truly valuable learning experience. 
And that's a wrap of this edition of Yes 101's Visual Radio. For the News First team, I'm Thiruni Karna Ratna. Thank you for watching. Good night.